begin with a success story. A story about someone very much like yourself. Our story about Eve. This is Eve, her full name, Eve Kennedy. There's nothing extraordinary about Eve, not a thing. She's just an American girl earning her own living, like millions of others. Yes, you can't help responding to Eve's smile. She's the most cheerful person we know, on the job or off. She's like that all the time. We'll venture to say if you asked her the reason, she couldn't put it into words, but I think we know. In a way, we're partly responsible, because you see, we're in business with Eve. Six months ago, Eve answered our advertisement calling for car attendance. She arrived at our offices almost at closing time, for Eve had a job, was gainfully employed as a stenographer in a downtown office. It was obvious immediately that Eve had the vitality and the personal charm so important in a profession where one meets the public many times daily. Self-assurance is an asset in any business, and Eve's poise and confidence did not go unnoticed. It was just as obvious her appearance and her manner were exceptional, in contrast to many of the others who applied. Glamour girls belong in pictures, and drive-in restaurants have no part in the entertainment field. And, of course, carelessness in the appearance of personnel is never tolerated, since it can raise a question as to the cleanliness of the entire establishment. The day Eve answered our ad, competition ran high. Nearly 50 applicants had preceded her, but our careful screening process disclosed that only Eve and three other candidates were adaptable to a career in the drive-in restaurant business. It usually takes a week to analyze all of the applications, and it was just about that length of time before Eve received a postcard asking her to report for an interview. Mr. Wyan, this is Miss Kennedy. How do you do, Miss Kennedy? How do you do? Won't you be seated? Thank you. I see by your application, Miss Kennedy, you're at present a stenographer. What prompts your desire to make a change? To be honest, Mr. Wyan, I'm not in the right profession. I'm not happy working indoors. I guess I've got too much pep for an office job. Well, you've certainly come to the right place. Pep is one of the prime essentials in this type of business. Besides, I understand that car attendants make considerably more money than most professional women. That's perfectly true. And incidentally, in the restaurant industry, we consider the expert servicing of the public a profession also. In other words, the car attendant, or car hop, as you've probably called them, are a highly skilled professional group. Let me show you the results of a recent nationwide survey comparing the earnings of car attendants with those of other professional women. As you can see, the car attendant outranks all other professions a great deal in their earnings. I didn't realize there was that much difference. The restaurant business certainly has a lot to offer. Right. Let me explain some other facts about our industry you probably aren't familiar with. There are approximately half a million restaurants in the United States today. Yes, and over $10 billion annually by the American people in restaurants of all kinds. That's quite a sum, and naturally, there's plenty of competition for it. The corner hot dog stand, the short order restaurant, the neighborhood drugstore, the tea room, the big hotel restaurant, and of course, the drive-in. All are making their bid for some part of this dining patronage. Nobody has a corner on it, of course, but the places that really attract the crowds do so because they have achieved the threefold ideal of restaurant operation. Good food, cleanliness, and superior service. And in the drive-in restaurant, the service factor is almost completely in the hands of the car attendant. Lacking any one of these three factors, even an established restaurant would cease to be competitive. I think I understand. There's a constant challenge to keep going forward, and you can't let down at all. That's perfectly right, Eve. You catch on quickly. 
As a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons you were selected from the 50 other girls who applied. Your appearance, background, and enthusiasm indicated the highest degree of adaptability for being in business for yourself. Myself? It's a figure of speech, of course, but in a way, it's perfectly true. We furnish the finest food money can buy, provide the proper tools and training. From there on, it's up to you to obtain the most from them by intelligent application. I know you won't be disappointed. I'm sure we won't either. You see, it's really management's fault if they select the wrong type of working partner. And just by way of illustrating some of the don'ts of this profession, let me tell you of an experience we had with a girl named Patsy. Yes, Patsy was one of those girls. She was so busy talking, she never got deep enough below the surface of anything to see what it was really about. Consequently, she was opinionated, superficial, and worst of all, discourteous. To Patsy, the sound of her own voice was the sweetest music in the world. In our business, one of the primary rules is prompt service. But Patsy's customers had to wait until she finished with the last word. For a fast talker, her feet were geared at an amazingly low ratio. And even lower was her personal interest in the customer. He was about as welcome as a hailstorm at a picnic. It was simply a waste of time to ask Patsy not to chew gum in the customer's face, nor lean on his door in a chummy and vulgar manner, nor stand with one foot on his running board. No, Patsy did these things anyway. This type of service was an obvious insult to the patron, but some customers have a remarkable amount of tolerance. Of course, the regulation requesting car attendants not to have friends visit during working hours, Patsy considered a personal invasion of her rights. Although disregard of this ethic results in slowing up of patron turnover and consequently loss of money for both of us. No customer likes a delay when turning in his order, but Patsy's feather brain didn't consider his desires of any great importance. As you can see, it isn't physically impossible to pile four orders on one tray. But there are several good reasons for not doing it. It looks, and often is, messy. This might be humorous in a slapstick comedy, but in terms of drive-in restaurant ethics, it just isn't done. Adequate tray service is one of the definite service practices of all drive-ins. Even her fellow employees couldn't quite understand what made Patsy tick. Strange as it may seem, these unsuspecting customers have remained in a pleasant frame of mind. But let's see what kind of service they're going to get. This is what you'd call catch as catch can, or leaving the customer to his own devices. Fortunately, this patron seems to possess some juggling ability, although probably reluctant to display his talents while dining. Who's really serving this car? Patsy or the patron? The net result of this kind of service is this. Patrons do not tip automats and do not tip generously simply because you expect it. Nor do they remain customers long with this type of treatment. Heaven help the next 10 customers in Patsy's present state of mind. No, Patsy didn't get a large tip, yet she feels the customer's at fault. But by what sort of reasoning, it's hard to imagine. And now, deeply resentful, she feels her tremendous and unrewarded effort in serving the car has earned her a five-minute rest. Patsy was well-named. She was a Patsy, all right. There wasn't a single regulation she hadn't violated. Naturally, we had to let her go. We found we were at fault if we did not evaluate and screen our applicants rigidly. As you can see, Miss Kennedy, this profession requires a great deal of self-discipline. I'm very much impressed. I understand now why you call it a profession. 
Have I the qualifications you consider important? I believe you have. You seem to be the type of young woman who would follow an idea through with enthusiasm and intelligent effort. Thank you. Now let me warn you, this work is not easy. It's probably the most strenuous profession a young woman can enter. You must be prepared to work in all types of weather, day or night. I'm not afraid of hard work, Mr. Wyan. Now, in order to eliminate any misunderstanding between us, let me point out a few basic principles which I hope will become habits. We insist on absolute courtesy to the customer and a sincere effort to please him. We still abide by the old saying, the customer is always right. We do not smoke, eat, or chew gum in his presence. Be courteous to your fellow employees. If you have any complaints, come to the office and talk it over. We do not tolerate tip-conscious employees, and the customer must always be pleased regardless of the circumstances. If any food item is not satisfactory, return it cheerfully and apologize for the error. Now, Miss Kennedy, are you still desirous of entering this profession? It's a challenge, Mr. Wine, but I've made up my mind, if you'll have me. When would it be convenient for you to start training? Well, I'd like to give my present employer ample notice, a week at least. That's perfectly all right. Then suppose you start here a week from Monday. Good. Study these meanwhile. It's important that you completely familiarize yourself with our menu and sales check procedure. Your first day with us will be spent observing the technique of a car attendant. Good luck, Miss Kennedy. As Eve went into training, she learned many things besides the routine of her job. She learned, for example, that in modern drive-in restaurant operation, there is as much painstaking thought given to the design efficiency of the establishment as there is to the training of its personnel. Carefully engineered and planned, embodying the latest types of step-saving equipment, the prompt delivery of food items to the customer revolves around an efficiently operated kitchen. Quality products are used throughout, and specially trained personnel are educated to prepare all food items as appetizingly as possible. Most drive-in restaurants today are equipped with the best in stainless steel, a measure considered indispensable for cleanliness and sanitation. An important recent development in drive-in service is the use of the infrared lamp, designed to maintain griddle temperatures of foods until served to the customer. Eve also noticed the cool efficiency and business-like manner with which her fellow employees conducted themselves. She was seeing in actual practice the reasons for many of the regulations pointed out to her at the time of her interview. On her very first day, Eve applied herself, asking questions when procedures were not clear, readily taking advice and absorbing the techniques gladly demonstrated by experienced fellow employees. Her interest and in the manner in which she observed every detail gave evidence that the management had, this time, selected the right working partner. No, Eve realized the job was not easy, but she was determined to qualify as a top employee. She learned, too, that the design efficiency of her place of business did not end with the kitchen, for even after the customer is served, there are dishes to be washed and sterilized. And in this modern stainless steel electric dishwasher, placed conveniently near the counter to save her steps, the task is done quickly and thoroughly. Let's follow this order and observe with Eve, an experienced car attendant in action. That's right, Eve, this man knows the answer. He's here to help you, and so is this experienced attendant. Watch her speedily dispatch a small order. Notice that the right tray has been selected, water supplied for each patron, and an adequate number of napkins and accessories given, and the whole order served with speed and courteous precision. This isn't as easy as it looks. 
The skillful securing of a tray to an automobile without overturning or spilling its contents requires practice and experience. And in this art, too, Eve was thoroughly instructed and practiced diligently until she was confident of handling each type of service tray. She spent a full day practicing, observing, and inquiring. And with a final refresher on sales check technique and a discussion of the menu and its contents, she was ready to serve her first customer. In the drive-in restaurant, the attendant is management's representative, the package around which his commodity is presented to the public. And greatly through the car attendant's efforts, both management and personnel stand to lose or gain a great deal. No, this isn't Eve's first day on the job. She's been at it for some time now. It's one of the most successful car attendants anywhere. Let's see how she does it. To begin with, notice her appearance. When she comes on duty, her uniform is spotless, hair well-groomed, and she's alert, ready in mind and body to make this day count. Notice her spirited approach. She places her card on the windshield, provides the necessary numbers of menus, always greeting the customer with a genuine smile of welcome. As another patron drives in to one of her stations, Eve excuses herself and follows the same snappy procedure, constantly maintaining an attitude of cheerfulness and sincerity. Eve knows that one way of increasing her earnings is to dispatch each car as quickly and efficiently as possible. For the same reason, she turns in the order immediately. And this action, too, has another effect. Eve knows the eyes of the patron are always upon her, and prompt service is one of the major reasons for the extending of gratuities. Eve also realizes that the customer's welcome is not to be measured by the amount he spends. All customers are entitled to equal treatment, regardless of appearance or apparent size of his purse. Her duty is to extend the best service possible. In contrast to the awkward, clumsy, and nervous manner of her first day, Eve has now emerged a confident, efficient, and cheerful car hop. Her first order is now ready. She's learned through experience and training that this type of order can best be served on two inside trays for the greatest convenience of the diners. And she makes sure that each tray is spotlessly clean. Next, she provides an adequate supply of water, napkins, and utensils. Notice how she places each item on the tray with the convenience of the customer always in mind. There's no evidence of carelessness or loss of motion here. Even the silverware gets a final check for cleanliness for Eve has a reputation for making even a metal tray look like a well-set dinner table. The importance of the training and practice Eve received six months ago can now be seen. These loaded trays are heavy, but by an expert, balanced perfectly and handled with ease. With this kind of care and caution, not one drop of coffee or water will be spilled to spoil her dinner table effect. Eve finds it no effort to be polite and exercise the customer courtesy words of sir or ma'am. Through experience in meeting the public, Eve has learned there are many problems and many types of people and a different way of handling each of them. Her secret? It's simple, tact, and the constant application of kindness and courtesy. Remember Patsy? No evidence of her attitude here. This customer is in a hurry, and Eve gears herself to render the service he desires. Uh-oh, has he changed his mind? No, he merely wants a little information. Well, you know how Patsy would have handled this one, and how. But to Eve, it's a service. 
She never answers an inquiry or a request with, I don't know, or any other negative response. She finds out, even if it requires a road map. This attitude and this kind of service wins for Eve and the management, steady, satisfied clientele and patron goodwill. Eve also realizes she has a duty to her business partners. She's not merely an order taker, but an excellent saleswoman. Notice that she does not remove the trays immediately, but inquires if anything more is desired. Restaurants of all types depend on volume to keep in business, and it is to her advantage to exercise the art of suggestive selling, and thus maintain a secure business for management and herself. But the selling must be done charmingly, adroitly. The customer's complete satisfaction, the only idea implied. There's a definite technique for obtaining a gratuity. Tipping is not, and should not be considered automatic. Notice how Eve does not stand expecting a tip. Politely, she makes change and says, thank you, come again. There's nothing tip conscious in her attitude. Her manner says plainly, I served you because it is my job, not because of what you may give me for that service, unless you consider it exceptionally well done. This friendly attitude almost always brings out a corresponding desire to return her courtesy. Here again, notice how the customer always reflects the attitude of the serving personnel. The price of the meal is on the check. That's all the customer owes. The management has made its profit. Having placed the correct change in the customer's hand, Eve now removes the trays and thanks her customers for their patronage, politely asking them to call again. Now, let's see what Eve's share of this transaction might be. On the average, her tips exceed 15% of her gross sales. Obviously, Eve's in business for herself in the most practical sense. Yep, the customer is always right, and Eve cheerfully returns this steak, which is a little too rare. No, Eve isn't perfect. She makes mistakes too, like the rest of us. But she's learned how to rectify those mistakes, and her sincerity never fails to keep the customer's goodwill. The management will gladly pay the cleaning bill and keep a customer, because Eve isn't afraid to admit she was at fault. That's almost all there is to Eve's story. She's staying with us because she likes her profession, enjoys meeting the public and most of all is pleased to see her bank account growing steadily. She and her fellow car attendants earn more than do 80% of those they serve. Thelma drives a new Buick, is putting her seven-year-old son through one of the finest military schools in the country. She's in superb health, is full of the joy of living. This is what her profession has done for her. Evelyn has helped her husband finance their comfortable little home. Her dream come true years before she ever thought it would be possible. Is it any wonder she likes her profession? These girls keep up their average earnings because they're truly professional women. They realize that so long as management sustains high standards of quality in food, their job is to represent that management through courteous service, maintain customer goodwill, and keep them coming back. No doubt about it, these young women have found their profession and are growing with it, have had the determination to say to themselves, let's be successful. <laughs>